So far in our discussions of matrix decompositions, we've covered the LU and LDV matrix decompositions, two general ways to decompose a matrix into either two or three matrices. But there are higher level variants of these more general decompositions that provide certain improvements or benefits. One such variant of the LU decomposition is the topic of today's video. Howdy folks, welcome to the seventh episode in this computational linear algebra series where we are going to be discussing the Cholesky decomposition. So this is the Cholesky decomposition. You saw it briefly in the tree in the introduction. The advantage of the Cholesky decomposition is that we are actually decomposing the matrix into a lower triangular matrix, right multiplied by a lower triangular matrix transposed which actually looks like this. And you can see that this is an exact variant of the Lu decomposition because we have a lower triangular matrix and then an upper triangular matrix. It's just that our upper triangular matrix in this case is just equivalent to our lower triangular matrix transposed. And this is the key benefit of the Cholesky decomposition. We only need to keep track of the values of one matrix since we can just then transpose it and then get and right multiply that lower triangular matrix by that transpose and then get back to our A matrix. But all higher level matrix decompositions have initial conditions that must be satisfied for us to be able to do that matrix decomposition. For the Cholesky decomposition, that initial condition is that our A matrix must be what is called positive definite. So what is a positive definite matrix? Well, a positive definite matrix uh, is much more of a pure linear algebra topic, not so much a computational linear algebra topic, so I'm not going to go into too much depth with this. I'll leave a few links into the, in the description down below where you will be able to find more information on positive definite matrices from a pure linear algebra standpoint. I, instead, am just going to quickly go through and review uh, some of the key concepts of a positive definite matrix. First, all the eigenvalues of a positive definite matrix must be positive. All the pivots must also be positive. All the subdeterminants of the matrix must also be positive. And generally speaking, the matrix will be symmetric and square. Again, that's a generalization, and for this particular video, we're only going to be considering uh, symmetric and square matrices. And that basically just means that any off-diagonal values, so i not equal to j, uh, will give us uh, that a i j is equal to a j i, if we're using i and j as our indices. Again, there will be links in the description down below for more resources where you can find out more about positive uh, definite matrices. So we're going to jump right into the code uh, on how we can actually perform a Cholesky decomposition because there are very quick ways of doing a Cholesky decomposition in both Python and Octave, and you can see we're starting off with Python. Per usual, all of this code can be found uh, on my GitHub and GitLab pages, linked in the description down below, so I will encourage you to check that out and fork the repo and start playing with all of this code. You can see that this is really just some simple driver code, but you can see in line 12, we are using the numpy linalg Cholesky function right here, which is going to do the entire decomposition for us. You can see that I have a 3x3 three three positive definite matrix where we're generating random values along the diagonals right here. And then you can see that on the uh, anywhere off the diagonal, we have symmetric values. Then what we're doing is we're just going to uh, output that to the terminal window. And as a check, this time we're subtracting A uh, minus uh, L right multiplied by L transpose. And you can see that in the terminal right here, we have uh, this standard output. This is our, uh, our one matrix, because again, this is the advantage of the Cholesky decomposition. We only need to keep track of one matrix. This matrix is generally referred to as the Cholesky factor, by the way. And you can see that when we check everything out, everything is pretty much zero with except for these diagonal values, which we can, uh, which are very small uh, in value, and we can attribute to floating point arithmetic error. So we can just approximate those to be zero and everything checks out. 
Moving on to the octave code, you can see that we're doing something very similar. We're doing a different 3x3 matrix, but you can see it's even simpler. We have in line 9 this shoal function that we're passing our matrix into. Bear in mind that octave uses the Cholesky factor or the return matrix uh, as the upper triangular matrix. So in turn, A would equal uh, L transpose L in octave. So we're just transposing it with the uh, single uh, rotation mark right there. Then we can go ahead and check everything out uh, with L by L transpose. We're not subtracting anything off and you can see and just spot check everything uh, that it all works out. And again, here is our Cholesky factor or our L matrix that we are returning. Again, the key advantage being that we only need to keep track of one matrix. But do note that there is something a bit peculiar with both of these functions. If we change one value in our square symmetric matrix to a different value, so this value should be a 5, but I've changed it to a 3, you can see that the code still runs even though it's not symmetric. And that's because the matrix here uh, passes the check on the back end for positive definiteness you can see that we still obtain a Cholesky factor, but we return back a matrix that is symmetric. And this is a key flaw with the basic algorithm that is used to check for positive definiteness. We're going to go over that in a moment, but just bear in mind that this is a significant flaw. And checking if a matrix is positive definite or not is still a very difficult and very advanced topic in linear algebra. That comes largely in part that identifying or obtaining eigenvalues and pivots uh, and even calculating subdeterminants is still uh, a little bit tricky and very computationally intensive. So here uh, in our linalg package, we're going to take a look and take a stab at the back-end procedure of how we actually check if a matrix is positive definite. So if you go into the linalg directory in the GitHub repo uh, under the seventh episode folder, you will see in line 54 we've defined this new function called posDevCheck, which checks if a matrix is positive definite. That's why we're passing in our A matrix. We can just do a simple Boolean expression right here where our positive definite state is default set to true. And if any of the values just before the off diag, just on the lower off diagonal squared are greater than or equal to the values on the diagonal, then we will raise an exception that the matrix is not positive definite and change our state to false, which then we are returning right here. To give a good example of this, uh, and, and where this flaw really takes place. Let's say that we have an A matrix, and we have 1, 2, 3 along the diagonal. We're not going to worry about anything above the diagonal uh, right now. Just assume that it's filled in with random values. And let's say that we have 4, 5, and 6 right here. These values are the ones that are going to, these boxed values are the ones that are going to be squared and compared to their counterpart in the algorithm. Uh, just to the right in the matrix. And this is going to continue to go on for larger sized matrix uh, matrices. And that's a key flaw in this, in, in this is that it allows us to check if a matrix is positive definite, but if you don't put in something that's symmetric, it will give you back something that is symmetric when going through and checking everything out. We can really begin to see where these problems lie when we take a look at the equations that we're going to use to compute the Cholesky decomposition. Here you can see we have uh, an equation for computing our diagonal terms and our off-diagonal terms. In both of these equations, you can see that we are reliant on this uh, sum term right here, where there is a dependence on other values within our lower triangular matrix that we are generating right here. You can see all of them right here. This makes things a little bit tricky and is why it will return back a symmetric matrix that is not uh, equivalent to the original matrix that you put into the function uh, of these uh, two equations for the diagonals and the off-diagonals. This poses an, an interesting little bit of complexity when we are coding it up, so let's take a look at how I've coded that up in the back end in Python. In the same linalg package, you will go and see just below our positive definite check in line 66, I've defined a new function called Cholesky, where we're going to pass in our A matrix. 
then you can see we are calling our positive definite check function uh, and we're setting that state equal to the variable PD. If our positive definite uh, check comes back as true, then we're all good to go. If it doesn't, we will uh, see that uh, we will see that exception be raised from the positive definite check function. But I've also added in this extra little line right here, uh, this else statement, so that uh, just in case, you know, if whatever the heck might happen goes wrong, it, we will also know that the matrix is not positive definite, so we can't perform the Cholesky decomposition. Then we just need to worry about one uh, particular matrix. Again, this is the Cholesky factor. And then we have uh, two loops right here, two for loops to help us keep track of our uh, indices. Then you can see we have an if-else statement right here. This if statement is for the diagonal equation right up here on top. And the uh, else statement right here is for the off-diagonal equation uh, for these algorithms. Then you can see we have these two loops right in here. These loops are there to help us keep track of these summations in the two equations. And then, per usual, we're just returning our Cholesky factor or this uh, message if we need that message. For the driver code, uh, which this one is the shoal.py file in the repository, this is just simple driver code. It's not very different from before, but instead of calling the Cholesky function in NumPy, we're in, uh, from linalg, we're importing our linalg package, and then we are calling that particular Cholesky function. Then we're doing the same exact checks as before, um, where we are going to be subtracting uh, our A matrix by L, by L transpose. Um, so you can see here is our matrix. We have our Cholesky factor. And then when we run the check, everything checks out exactly how we want it to, except for these two values, which again are very small, and we can attribute to floating point arithmetic error, so we can approximate those to be zero. So here we have our Cholesky decomposition. And again, the advantages we only need to keep track of one matrix. Comparing that to the Lu decomposition, we need to keep track of two very distinct matrices as uh, they, these values transposed are not necessarily going to match up with those values. But you can see where uh, the advantage of Cholesky comes into play. Cholesky is just one of many higher level matrix decompositions that follow uh, these formats. And in the next episode, we're going to look at a higher level variant of the LDV matrix decomposition. We're getting very close to being able to take a look at some of the different applications of linear algebra. And these decompositions are going to play quite an important role, and you will definitely see that. So stay tuned for those. Those are coming up in three to four episodes. So just Please be patient. We're working our way to that. But if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope that you were able to find this video useful, helpful, or whatnot. If you did, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing the video. Thank you very much again for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.